Since its birth with the creation of Bitcoin back in 2009, blockchain technology has rested on the pillars of decentralization, security, and scalability. These blockchain features work together to produce and sustain a viable network. But there's a problem with these pillars. A concept coined by Ethereum founder, Vitalik Buterin, proposes that one of them must be sacrificed as a trade-off to accommodate the other two. Today, we're taking a look at the blockchain trilemma. Welcome to Crypto Sketch 101. We're the number one go-to spot for all things crypto, and we're glad you've stopped by. If you love cryptos as much as we do, please give this video a like, and be sure to subscribe to our channel. In today's video, we're breaking down the blockchain trilemma. We'll examine the three pillars in depth, and talk about some possible solutions. There's a lot to cover, so let's get into it. The first pillar, decentralization, is at the heart of blockchain technology, and drives activities across the ecosystem. Decentralized procedures and technologies minimize, and even eliminate the role of middlemen across sectors. When it comes to centralized finance, banking institutions typically act as middlemen, providing services and charging a fee for those services. By removing banking institutions from financial products, decentralized finance systems are able to share earnings and governance with consumers and the greater community, rather than the intermediaries. Decentralized networks on a more fundamental level, crowdsource consensus, which implies that no single organization can control or censor the information that passes through them. The downside to decentralization, however, is that it can significantly slow network throughput. As more miners protect the network through consensus, transaction speeds slow. The second pillar is security. On a blockchain network, reducing the distribution of blockchain nodes either in number, geographically, or both, has the benefit of increasing network throughput. Doing so makes the network more centralized. There's a downside, however. Centralizing reduces security especially on proof-of-work networks like Bitcoin. A 51% attack is more likely to occur in more centralized networks because hackers can obtain more hashing power more easily. Hackers can take control of a network and manipulate transactions for financial benefit by overwhelming it. Smaller networks tend to be easier targets because they have fewer nodes and more concentrated validation authority. It is unlikely that larger networks such as Bitcoin can be taken control of by a 51% attack. Two examples of successful 51% attacks include Bitcoin Gold and Ethereum Classic. In 2018 Bitcoin Gold fell victim to an attack and hackers were able to make away with nearly $18 million in assets. Ethereum Classic was attacked in 2019 and led to the loss of nearly $1.1 million in assets. And finally, scalability. Scalability is the ability of a blockchain technology to accommodate high transactional throughput and future growth without significant increases in fees and without sacrificing performance. Blockchains that perform badly as usage grows lack scalability. Greater scalability is feasible, but security, decentralization, or both would suffer as a result, according to the blockchain trilemma. Scalability is necessary for blockchain networks to compete with legacy, centralized platforms, which currently have considerably greater network settlement speeds and usability. While several blockchain systems have established decentralization and security, today's leading DeFi networks have significant challenges when it comes to scalability. In order to solve the blockchain trilemma and simultaneously achieve decentralization, security and scalability, we must look to layer 1 and layer 2 solutions. Let's take a look at both of these solutions, starting with layer 1. Layer 1 refers to a base blockchain. So a layer 1 solution would be an improvement to the blockchain itself. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana and the BNB smart chain are examples of layer 1 networks. There are two ways to improve layer 1 networks. The first is a change to the consensus mechanism. The consensus mechanism currently in use on prominent blockchain networks such as Bitcoin and Ethereum is proof of work. Although proof of work is safe, it is also time consuming. Bitcoin, for example, can only achieve around 7 transactions per second while Ethereum can perform between 15 and 20. Many newer blockchain networks achieve consensus through proof-of-stake. 
The proof-of-stake protocol decides validator status based on a stake in the network, rather than requiring miners to solve cryptographic algorithms with significant processing power. It is considerably faster and even more environmentally friendly. Ethereum is currently in the process of upgrading from proof-of-work to proof-of-stake and could potentially achieve speeds of up to 100,000 transactions per second. The second layer one solution is sharding. Sharding divides transactions into smaller sets of data referred to as shards. The network processes these shards in parallel, allowing for sequential work on multiple transactions at the same time. Furthermore, rather than having each network node maintain a copy of every block from the beginning to the present, this information could be partitioned and held by separate nodes. Sharding is also in Ethereum's upgrade plan and scheduled for sometime in 2023. Layer 2 solutions involve secondary frameworks or protocols that are built on top of existing blockchain systems. While there are a number of different Layer 2 solutions, we'll cover the top three. The first is nested blockchains. In nested blockchains, the main blockchain sets parameters and establishes the rules of the entire network. The executions themselves are then carried out by a set of secondary chains. Many blockchain tiers are then established on the main chain, each with a parent-child relationship. The parent chain delegates work to the child chain and upon completion of the work, it is returned to the parent chain from the child chain. Unless there is a need for dispute resolution, the underlying main blockchain does not participate in any operations. The work distribution in this approach minimizes the processing load on the main chain, resulting in exponentially improved scalability. Sidechains are a second type of Layer 2 solution. A sidechain is a transactional chain that runs alongside the blockchain and is used for larger bulk transactions. Sidechains have their own consensus mechanisms, which can be adjusted for speed and scalability, and a utility token is frequently utilized as part of the data transfer mechanism between side and main chains. The main chain's principal function is to provide general security and dispute resolution. Sidechains carry with them an added security benefit. Security breaches on sidechains have no effect on the main chain or other sidechains. The downside is that building a sidechain from the ground up is necessary and requires a significant amount of time and work. And third, state channels. A state channel improves total transaction capacity and speed by allowing two-way communication between a blockchain and off-chain transactional channels. State channels use smart contracts to secure transactions and do not need node verification. The finished state of the channel and all its inherent transitions are posted to the underlying blockchain when a transaction or batch of transactions is completed on a state channel. A few state channel examples include Bitcoin Lightning and Ethereum's Raiden network. A downside to state channels is that they do sacrifice some decentralization in exchange for greater scalability. And that's all we have for today's video. We hope you were able to get a better understanding of the blockchain trilemma and some of its possible solutions. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for joining us and we'll catch you in the next video.